those of you using the newest version of the Camera Raw Editor might have already seen it. Adobe introduced a new profile called Adobe Adaptive. This is an AI-powered profile which tries to help creating better looking images. So let me quickly explain what this new profile does and afterwards let's also edit an image together using it. While the older profiles like Adobe Landscape or Adobe Standard are applying the same changes to every image, the adaptive profile works differently from picture to picture. According to Adobe, an AI model analyzes the image and adjusts tones and colors to make them look just right. The effect is as if the AI had changed exposure, shadows, highlights, color mixer, curves and other controls for you. But the great thing with these profiles is, these are just settings applied to the base RAW file without changing any of the sliders or controls of Lightroom, which in turn gives us more control over the image. The AI for this profile has been trained on hand-edited images of people, pets, food, cars, landscapes and so on, including artificial light as well as natural light during different seasons and times of the day. It tries to lighten the subject, especially if the subject is in the foreground or the shadows. It also tries to adjust the contrast locally in a way that makes people stand out from the background. Or it tries to make food brighter and more colorful. In other words, it effectively has learned the semantics of natural images and rule of thumb for turning good photographs into better photographs. This is what Adobe said. I have tried it on several shots now and in a few cases this new profile worked really really well, while in other scenarios it was unfortunately completely unusable. Let me give you two examples. Okay, so here we are in the Camera Raw Editor. You can find the Adobe Adaptive Profile under the Profile drop-down menu, right at the top. Let's activate this. Right away, the image looks brighter and has a lot more contrast to it. At the first glance, this might look very good, but if you're looking closely, it seems like the Adobe Adaptive Profile does have problems, just like for example the AI Sky Mask has separating the subject, in this case these trees right here in the foreground, from the sky in the back. Looking very closely, you can see some halo going on just around this big tree on the right side. This is a huge issue which you cannot get rid of. We could try play around with the amount the profile will be applied on, but in the end, the adaptive profile is unusable on this particular image. Then let me give you another example with this shot. Again, let's change the profile to Adobe Adaptive. And in this case, it works quite a bit better. You can see it makes the whole shot a lot darker, but we do have some very nice details in the highlights up here in the sky. The shadows are a little bit too deep, but that's something we can easily fix by simply raising the exposure and the shadows and so on. And as we do this, we are getting a really, really well exposed image. And I would say in this case, the Adobe Adaptive Profile works really well. But now let me show you the example where this has worked the best. Therefore, we will be working on a panoramic image, so first let's merge it. I'm going to select all the images down below, right click on one of them and choose Merge to Panorama. I'm going with the cylindrical projection method because it gives the best results for this image and I don't change anything besides that. Once this is done, hit the Merge button. And I'm also going to crop this image very slightly. I want to get rid of all these gaps towards the image border. So let's take away a bit from each side here. Also going to take away a bit from the bottom and the top. Then let's straighten the horizon. That's looking good. Okay, so this is our raw panorama file. Then let's again use the Adobe Adaptive Profile. And right away, what you can see on this image, it works really, really well. You can see we have a much clearer looking shot with higher contrast, especially in this area. It's highly visible. We still might have some halos around these things overlapping the sky, but as I'm going to get rid of them anyway, I don't think it matters that much. Now that we have set up the profile, we can continue with the basic adjustments just as we do with 
all the other images. So for this scene, looking at the histogram, you can see it is still on the darker side. So I'm going to bring up the exposure first, introducing some more brightness. And I'm also going to bring up the blacks just so the darkest areas become a little bit brighter. Looking really good so far. What I want to do as well is to bring down the highlights because I want to have a little more details in those very bright areas. And then I think we can even bring up the whites some more to push the contrast of this shot. All right, that's looking like a great winter scene. Once I set up the tones for the image, I am going to work on the white balance. So let's expand the color panel and I'm going to simply raise the temperature until I get to a point where it just looks good to me. I'm not trying to set a neutral white balance. Instead, I want to kind of already color grade the image a little bit at this point. While we're at it, let's also bring up the vibrance right around here. Looks pretty good to me. And then let's go into the effects tab. I want this image to be really sharp and crisp. So I'm going to bring up the texture, which will sharpen the image. Then let's bring up the clarity. And I'm also going to bring up the dehaze very gently. Okay, this is looking good. That's the image after the basic adjustments with the Adobe Adaptive Profile. Let's again compare to before. This was our base file, rather dark compared to the image after the basic adjustments with a really nice contrast and sharpness. I also want to apply a little bit of masking on here. So let's do that. Open up the masking panel. I'm going to use a radial gradient with which I'm going to target the reflection in the foreground because I want to make this reflection pop a little more. And all I'm going to do in here is to bring up the clarity, which always works great with a reflection like this. Then I'm going to use a color range mask. I'm targeting this blue tone right here up in the sky. And then let's further adjust this color range mask by subtracting a linear gradient coming up from the bottom. The reason is I want to make the top part of the sky darker, kind of creating a vignetting effect, but without affecting those white puffy clouds. So what I'm doing in here is to simply pull down the exposure very, very gently and thus we're creating this vignetting effect. Beautiful. Then we want to do a little bit of color grading. So let's open up the color mixer. In this image, there are three tones that are important. This is blue, purple, and magenta. These are the three tones I want to push a little more. So I'm going to bring up the blue saturation. I'm also going to bring up the purple saturation and I'm going to bring up magenta. All right, this is looking great. I'm also going to apply some split toning through the color grading panel right here. Let's start with the highlights on which I'm going to apply a warm color tone. So first I'm setting up the hue somewhere between red and orange looks good to me. And let's of course also bring up the saturation a little bit. I really don't want to overdo it for this shot. So I'm going to use minimal amounts of saturation and I'm doing the same for the mid tones. However, I want to keep some color contrast. So instead of a warm hue, I'm going with a cold color tone. Let's say right around here. And again, let's bring up the saturation. So this is looking pretty good. Finally, we can do some more color grading in the calibration tab. What I'm doing for every image that I added is to bring down the blue primary hue. I just think it looks much better. Uh, let's tone it down a little bit. If you go too far, the snow might look strange. So I'm going with only minus 10 here, but I also want to bring up the saturation to make the colors pop. Let's raise them quite a bit. Nice. I do think I also want to bring down the red hue. Let's see what this does. I really like this effect. I'm also going to bring up the saturation for red here, just like this. Perfect. Then all that's left to do is the sharpening in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings. I'm bringing down the radius. I'm increasing the details. Then let's hold down the Alt key while adjusting the masking slider. So we can nicely filter out all those unnecessary areas like the sky and the water. And then let's increase the amount of sharpening. Beautiful. Now that's it for the raw adjustments. Unfortunately, as we merge the panoramic image, there are a few areas that don't make sense, which I'm going to clean up now. So let's open up this object. And before I start, I'm hitting Control J, which creates a duplicate layer. So I do have a backup. I'm going to use the lesser tool and I'm going to select the gap at the very top, which I want to fill first. All right, I'm going to hit Shift F5 and 
I'm choosing content aware. Let's hit OK and see if this works. This is looking pretty good. The reason I'm going with content aware is if I use generative fill, this area would be too big for the generative fill and it would create a low resolution fill, which I which is not what I want. But as you can see, content aware works just right for this area. Then I'm going to use the, the spot healing brush to clean up the shot. Actually, no, let me use the clone stem tool because the spot healing brush might have problems with the texture of the snow down below. And with the clone stem tool, I'm copying an area by holding down the R key and clicking right in here next to that straw. And then all I'm going to do is to brush along this thing. And this way I can nicely get rid of it. That's it for editing this image using Adobe's new adaptive profile. So in the end, I would suggest just try using it on different images. Sometimes it works really good as you can see, but a lot of times there are still a few areas that are not particularly looking better using that new profile. I hope this little Photoshop video was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.